what is going on ladies and gentlemen my name is Husky or Hayden here today I'm going to be showing you guys how to make a simplistic yet professional looking profile picture within Photoshop the version of Photoshop I'm using is Adobe Photoshop CC 2018 but you can do this with any version of Photoshop I believe now the reason I'm going to be making this tutorial even though there's so many out there is I like to do a different style when I make my profile picture such as the one that you see on screen and I don't believe that I've seen anyone else do a style kind of like this or have this kind of personal touch with or finesse to it like the way that I like to do it so I'm going to be sharing with you guys how to make that profile picture in this video. Alright ladies and gentlemen now that we have Photoshop open what we're going to do is we're going to go up here to file new and we're going to create a new file that is oh, it opened on my other monitor whoops so we're going to create a file that is 800 by 800 pixels because that is the default profile picture size that uh youtube allows so we're going to create that i always like to make mine with a transparent background but for this tutorial you're going to want to take your rectangle tool right here you're going to want to make sure that you have it fill on white and no stroke uh, unless you want a stroke for some reason which is completely up to you so you're just going to want to make a rectangle that's bigger than the square or the size of the square doesn't really matter and then after you make your rectangle you're going to want to go to your whoops after you make your rectangle you're going to want to go to um, your folder where you have all your backgrounds and stuff that you have saved and you're going to want to pull any background in so just to prove that you can really use any background to make this look good I'm going to pull in what picture do I want to use this one I don't even know what this is, but we're gonna pull it in anyways. So, I'm gonna make that the size of the rex or the size of the square, pretty much. And so, as you can see, it's not the world's best quality photo, nor does it look that decent. But um, we're gonna make it look pretty. So the first thing we're gonna want to do is we're gonna come up to this right here. We're gonna click, make sure that we have the photo selected. No, I don't want to do blending options. So then we're gonna go down to luminosity. And that's why you're going to want this rectangle under it. Because if you don't have that rectangle, it will not go black and white. So for this tutorial, we want it to go black and white. So there we go. Did that by going up here to luminosity. So now after we've done that, what we're going to do is we're going to create a new layer. And actually, no, we're not going to create a new layer just yet. But I'm going to go ahead and leave it there. We're going to make sure we have our photo selected. We're going to go up here to filter, blur, and Gaussian blur. And that is way too much blur. Okay, hang on. Let me. Everything's opening in a different monitor. I don't know what's going on here. So, I'm gonna. We're just gonna experiment with this until it looks decently blurry in the background, but not too much. So, 5.2 in my case for this picture. I think that looks about right. And then if you think that it needs more after that Gaussian blur, you can come back up here to filter blur once again and go to motion blur and then you can make it look like you've been tripping on drugs for four hours you you're totally okay with doing that that is actually what i did for the profile picture that we saw at the start of this video so we're just going to click ok on that motion blur looks fine so now that we have this picture in the most important thing for the style that i like to do is i like to pull in this grungy marble texture and this is in all of the photos that i designed this way so all we're going to do is we're going to put this texture on top of the photo right here. Then we're going to go to back up here to like our layer options and we're going to select overlay on it. And then we're going to lower the opacity until it looks like it's a crumbled piece of paper type thing. So something like that. That looks, that actually looks pretty nice. Wow. Was not expecting that. So on this new layer that we made earlier guys, we're going to go back to the rectangle tool over here. And we're going to go up to fill this time and we're going to have no fill at all and we're going to put a black stroke on it and you can make the border size right here of the stroke whatever you want it to be so just put a rectangle down that's bigger than the square and then all we're going to do is go back to the move tool and then hit Control t for the transform and then we're going to make it the size of the uh, square exactly and then doing this we're going to take the opacity and we're going to lower it quite a bit there we go I think that looks pretty nice so now we have a border on our uh, profile picture that we're going to have so now that we've got this border right here we can go ahead and start getting into the good stuff so I'm gonna open up a graphics pack from one of my favorite graphic designers on YouTube's name is graphics 
So whenever this pack decides to open, I'm going to pull some, just pull a couple of things out of it that I like to use in the photos that I make. So here we go. So he has a really good color correction, so I'm going to pull out his color correction here. All credit goes to him for this color correction. You can really see what it does to this picture. It just makes it look that much more better. It makes it look really nice, actually. So we're going to want to make sure that the border is on top of the um, color correction so that it's not being affected by the color correction because the border is not something we want to be affected by that color correction. So now that we've done this, we're going to go ahead and create a new layer, and now we're going to put our logo in. So the way that all my logos are done is I have this font called Have Heart, and I always just put text, and then H-S-K-I-O, my caps lock's on, whoops, my bad, H-S-K-I-I-E, since I am husky. So we're going to center this on the picture, well, if it will center, there we go. So then we're going to transform it, hold shift, and rotate it just a tad bit. This is just down to personal preference because that's what I like to do with my pictures. And then I'm going to create another text box. And I'm going to choose a different version of the Have Heart font where I have these swashes like it looks like I just signed it and got a little fancy with it. So put that like that you can use any logo in the middle here you don't have to do what I'm doing with the have heart font or you don't have to use text like that you can do really whatever you want to do with it so what you're gonna want to do now is you're going to want to um you're gonna want to pick a color so for this one I think I'm gonna do uh, you know what just giant color me we're just gonna go with the deep red deep red we'll just make it real simple I'm gonna want to go ahead and swap the other color to white just in case so now that we have this deep red, what we're going to want to do is we're going to go to blending options. I don't know why it's all opening on a different monitor. We're going to click stroke. We're going to make sure that the size is on one pixel outside. The opacity is decently low. And for the color, we're going to want to pick the same red that we just had. Or you can always use the eyedropper tool and then click the color over here. And then click OK. In my case, it was really easy because I just picked the deepest red. Then we're just going to copy this layer style and paste it onto the other text one. So now we have this like, now we have this red border on it, kind of. I'm going to go ahead and make the text just a tad bit bigger. And I'm going to go back to this border and make it a little darker so that you can actually tell it's there. So now we have a problem right now with the way the red is clashing with this up here. So I'm going to go ahead and fix that now and show you guys how to do that. So in this graphics pack, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull in this file called Extra Finishing Touches. I'm going to put that under the text. And then we're going to go through and figure out what kind of things I think would look good on it. So something like that. I guess we could try to incorporate this actually. Oh, it selected the text. All right, so I'm just going to transform this. I'm going to make it big. And I'm going to take the opacity of it way down. Righty, there we go. I wonder what it would look like without the CC. Nah, it'd still look really bad. It's the way the picture is. So I'm going to go ahead and hop out of that for just the moment. I uh, don't need to exactly do that just yet. And now I'm going to focus on uh, making it work with the color scheme that we have. So if the color scheme that we picked is red, then I can go to my paintbrush tool here on a brand new, um, what's it called, layer. And then I can take this red and I can kind of just click in some random spots. Make sure that it's under the border and under the color correction. And then lower the opacity of it. Just a tad bit. I wonder if I can get away with doing something like. I wonder if I can put it right behind the text. There we go. That's starting to look pretty good, actually. So. So basically, all I've done up to this point was create the background, blur it, put a texture over it, put a border on it, add my logo in and add a stroke to it and then just put some color on the back and so far this is really simplistic it's really basic but it's looking really really nice so I'm gonna go back to this extra finishing touches folder that I mentioned just a minute ago 
And something that I like to do with all my designs is these particles. But I don't like to just keep the particles the way they are, just like that. Because that looks kind of dull, kind of plain. So I'm going to go up to Filter here, Blur. And I'm going to Motion Blur these. And see, when I Motion Blur them, they look a little... Oops, did I hit Cancel? I must have hit Cancel. Not that smart. Go back to the Motion Blur. And then the way it looks right now, just click OK. Then hit Control J to duplicate it. And then just move it to a different area. And now it it looks a little better with just those particles. So I um, always like to use this one too. And then do the same exact thing to it. Just go back to Filter, Blur, Motion Blur. Blur just, oops. I'm going to move back. And blur it just like that. And now it's looking like... Um, there's bullets flying across the screen or light or something like that. And right now it looks really, really nice just the way it is. So I'm going to go ahead and hop out of this extra finishing touches folder. And I'm going to go ahead and add the final touch to it. We're going to go back to the layer up here. We're going to create a new layer. Go back to our brush tool. Go back to the white. To the color white. And then we're going to add my own little CC touch so I did three up here to kind of make like a sun once in the middle and then once on each bottom corner and then we're gonna come to the opacity over here and we're gonna lower the opacity down to about 46 50 percent and we're gonna make sure we want to put that under the border but not under the color correction because this is like an additional color correction that we're gonna be adding to it and then um, to make the text stand out a little bit more because I feel like it's getting drowned out by everything else that's happening we're gonna open this up and click on drop shadow and for the drop shadow we're gonna click on it and we're gonna make sure the opacity is decently low but the distance is not that far out like this where it just looks bad but kind of right under it we're actually gonna have to raise the opacity in this case lower the size of it just a tad bit back up alrighty and then we're just gonna copy this layer style and paste it onto the other text and see what we need to fix with it so I actually think that looks pretty good just for the picture that it is and there's really nothing much else that we need to do to it guys that's pretty much all that it is Alrighty guys, that is going to be it for today's video. I really hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Any feedback that you could leave me in the comments or anything that you want me to upload, any more tutorials that you want me to do, anything like that would be much appreciated, and I'll see you all in the next one.